Well, thanks for coming, everyone, and everyone online. Um, welcome to uh, the OKC SQL user group. Recognize most people out there. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about SQL Server sandboxes, some place to play. But before we do that, I'd like to thank Techlahoma. They are sponsoring the group, and they're the reason why we are in Starspace 46, which is this place right here. Um, really appreciate them uh, sponsoring us. And uh, if you'd like to help give back to Techlahoma, because Techlahoma doesn't just sponsor our group, they sponsor a bunch of groups that you can go and learn for free. And um, if you like that sort of thing, then uh, they're, they're a nonprofit org. Um, you can make donations to them. Uh, probably techlahoma.org with a slash donate. Mm, I was right. I just need to be a little bit more confident. Uh, so techlahoma.org slash donate if you'd like to help the cause and you like free training and uh, you appreciate it, then that's a good place to go. Um, another thing, there's a few things that you can do also is uh, twitch.tv slash techlahoma is being streamed right now. They stream a bunch of different... Uh, free content um, from the user groups. And uh, if you have Amazon Prime, an included benefit for that is um, you can subscribe to channels, which gives the channels money um, as part of the Amazon Prime subscription. So if you go to, if you log into twitch.tv and go to te uh, the Techlahoma channel, you can subscribe using Prime and you'll be donating money to them, which will be really great for all the orgs. Uh, all the uh, the groups, rather. Um, another thing you can do is go to Amazon.com. Um, but before you go to, to don't type in Amazon, do smile.amazon.com. Uh, that allows your purchases for there to be a uh, donation um, to whatever charity or uh, nonprofit that you want to uh, that's part of their database. And Techlahoma is one of those. And it doesn't add any uh, additional charge to your purchases, but they do, um, Techlahoma will get a small amount um, of money whenever you make purchases, which is awesome. But you gotta remember to go to smile.amazon.com, set that up, and I recommend bookmarking that if you're gonna go to Amazon so that you remember to just click the bookmark and it'll take you right there. And those are some easy ways to help support the group that just take a few minutes and uh, then uh, everybody benefits really. I think. Um, another thing that you should consider doing is uh, joining the Slack channel, which is um, free, doesn't cost any money, and there's a big community. We're on uh, part of the community. Um, and uh, <clears throat> if you have questions about the group or just questions in general, there's a bunch of different channels where you can ask things or just uh, uh, hang out, really, online. Um, and it's a great place. So Techlahoma, Techlahoma Slack is another place that you should join. Another uh, thing to consider is if you like Starspace 46, there's places you can go to uh, uh, online where you can become a member and then you get to use Starspace 46 for it, whatever your membership is. So you pay X amount of, for the membership and then you get so many hours uh, with office space here or not necessarily an office, but a place to work, so. How am I doing? Am I forgetting anything major so far? License plate? Yeah, they have a whole license plate. Whoa. I didn't even know about that, so I can't be blamed. Well, actually, I can be blamed because I should have probably known. But there's a, you can purchase license plate uh, cover things. What are those called? License plate itself. Oh, oh. My trusty... Uh, companion here, John. Look at that. It's probably, uh, here, maybe they won't see it online. Move this way. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. So you can uh, <clears throat> buy a whole license plate um, from the state, and I'm guessing that Techlahoma gets a portion of that or something. Another way to contribute to the group. I'm just saying, 
And if you want me to, if you don't want to hear me talk about this, then just like everybody sign up and they'll get tons of money. And then they'll be like, we have way too much money. Stop talking about it. So if everybody just does that, then I won't have to say it to do it. But really, a lot of it, like I said, just takes a few minutes of your time and it really helps out. So <clears throat> I don't know if there's anything else to talk about with that. Good? Yes. I'm getting better at this. Takes me, it took me a little while, but getting better. Okay, so let's move on. SQL Server sandboxes. This is in, uh, we're doing this presentation, one, because it's one of the few things I feel really uh, happy about um, uh, presenting, because uh, it really helped me out a whole lot uh, whenever I was learning databases and SQL Server specifically. Um, but also, next month is gonna be the workshop. So we're gonna have an opportunity, if you'd like, you can bring your machine in next month on the 15th, um, which is tax day. So if you wanna get your mind off taxes, you can come in here and uh, bring your machine, or don't bring your machine if you don't want to, but the idea is, is that we, we are hoping to provide a uh, virtual machine that you can take, download, and put on your machine, and uh, we'll see how well it works, but it, we're sort of just trying this out to see how it goes, and, um, we'll be able to solve problems together. Well, so we'll break, I'll break things. Um, me and a guy, Randy, are gonna help break things and maybe Bill and a few others. And then we're gonna try to fix those things together. Um, and if you'd like to click the buttons and you'll have an opportunity, opportunity to do that. So, but before that, we're just gonna talk about the nature of sandboxes and things like that and how you can do it yourself and sort of the behind the scenes and a few different options. We're gonna talk about different options you can do because there's more than one way you can create your own sandbox and most of these are free or really inexpensive. You can make them expensive if you want, but uh, they don't have to be. So before we go on too much further, more a little bit about me that nobody really cares about, but I have to put it in there because it's part of the way things go. So Jimmy Ewald, I used to be a DBA with SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server. Now I'm a data engineer. So it sounds cooler, I think, but I don't know if it is or not. I'm El Presidente, as John likes to say. Yep. Um, <clears throat> for this user group, this here user group. So make sure that any problems that you have, you come to me because I'm the person to blame. Co-organizer three times for SQL Saturday, and maybe the organizer for this year if, uh, if we have one. So uh, I don't know if we're gonna have one or not, because uh, it's, well, we'll see. I'll just say, we'll see. Don't give me that look, John. Uh, John really wants to have it, we'll see, we'll see. And uh, lastly, I've been really enjoying this weather. If you're from the OKC area, it's been very nice. And today, I really wish we could be outside right now, actually. I know we should, we should just go out there. Nobody would learn a thing. We talked about this earlier. Nobody would learn a thing, but at least we'd get some nice sunshine. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the goals for today a little bit. I don't know how long everything's gonna go. I'm probably gonna go through a bunch of, I took a bunch of screenshots uh, of the setup so that people can go back and rewatch this if they want to go through it. And it's sort of like a literal click by click. Um, so there's a lot of, of that sort of thing. Um, and a lot of this stuff, this, this is specifically showing an installation for Microsoft SQL, but I mean, the same sort of, you, you can still create a, uh, a virtual machine and just put a different database on it if you have access to the database. Um, oh, geez, get out of here. Is that, oh, nobody can see that, just me. Sorry. Okay. Um, so gain uh, knowledge on virtual machines, blah, 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 blah. Get, be prepared for next month whenever we do the workshop, which is also at John's request. John, you're making a lot of appearances today in the presentation. Um, and this is going to be, like I said, this helped me out whenever I was learning SQL. And so hopefully it will help out that. But if you want to, if you don't have knowledge on that, you um, are a really experienced uh, SQL dev, or a database administrator, then maybe this you could still get something out of this too. Um, so let's, especially since a lot of this stuff that I'm going to be talking about is, has to do with in the cloud stuff. So, 
Yes, indeed, and Azure. No spoilers. Oh, I clicked off the thing, hold on. Okay, there you go. Okay, so here are the options that I have. Uh, there is probably more, but these are the ones that I'm most familiar with. Um, so just going down the line, um, starting from the top, local machine. So you can download SQL Server specifically for um, uh, de developer edition, and it comes with all the bells and whistles, but you can't use it for production work, but you can use it to play around with as a sandbox. And you can actually just install that if you're using uh, Windows, but actually it's on Linux now as well. Uh, just download it straight to your home machine, which is kind of nice, but also kind of can have problems as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, virtual machine, which is gonna be the main focus of tonight. Uh, Microsoft Azure, which is in the cloud and uh, <clears throat> owned by Microsoft. Then you have AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. EC2, which is Elastic Cloud Compute. AWS RDS, which is Relational Database Service or something, something like that. And Docker, which is, I don't have a whole lot of news about Docker. I've heard good things about it, but I've also heard it's kind of a pain on Windows. I'm like kind of a Windows guy. Um, but I've heard good things about it. That's, so we'll cover all these things a little bit and a lot on more on the virtual machine. <clears throat> so moving on to the first one, we're just gonna go from the top down. Installing on your home machine. So just a few pros and cons about this. I'm not gonna do pros and cons necessarily for all of them, but specifically for just installing on your laptop, your Windows laptop or your, or your home desktop or work laptop, whatever it is. The, there's some really nice things about it. A, you can just download the dev edition. It's relatively quick and easy because you just download it and install it right onto your machine. Um, nice things about that is, is that, oh, you're in, the, in a plane or something and you don't have access to internet or the internet is super bad. Well, good news is, is that you just have the database right there on your machine. So that's one of the benefits to, to not having cloud, <coughs> uh, having to deal with the cloud because as everyone knows, the cloud is uh, all online. But there are some more cons than pros in my opinion. Um, by the way, this is all just my opinion. So if you uh, wanna fight me about it, that's totally fine. Um, but this has just been in my experience. So whenever you install um, on your Windows machine, you can have the SQL Server actually, it, it sort of gets tangled up with your OS and that can cause some problems. I don't really have any specific examples, but you can have some contention and whenever you try to rip out, if you try to uninstall the SQL Server, it can cause some problems I've heard. Um, again, I've, I haven't really done that that much, but I've heard that can be an issue. Um, so that's where the harder to clean up comes in as well. Uh, big thing is, is it's not isolated from other services running on the machine. So it's going in the background, uh, it's going to take up CPUs um, and things like that. And uh, it, it can cause some problems there. Um, you can't create a save point or roll back. So if on a virtual machine, like we'll talk about in a few minutes, you can like save where, um, you know, I just inst I installed everything, I put on a, a database, now I'm gonna tinker around with it, which is one of the primary um, purposes of having a sandbox is you wanna play around. Um, if I break something on a virtual machine and I saved where it was, then I can just easily roll back. But if it's on my home machine, I mean, I can have backups of databases, but you can also make things hard for yourself and you can't go back very easy, easily. Um, and uh, take up space on your hard drive. That's just like I said, it's not in the cloud, so everything you do, you install into your local machine. Virtual machines, just in general, it's like Inception. So this is for anyone who has heard of virtual machines but maybe doesn't fully understand them or has never heard of virtual machines and doesn't understand them. Just think about the movie Inception, if you've ever seen that. It's like that, but less confusing. Um, it's a machine within a machine. Um, 
it's really, yeah, yeah. You don't have to like be plugged in or anything either to invade dreams like in Inception. <clears throat> but so virtual machines is what it sounds like. It's a virtual, it's not physical. So if you think about, again, in it, a lot of this, everybody might know this already, but I'm just gonna say it just in case somebody has never heard of a virtual machine. Um, a physical machine has like the, my laptop here. This might have, um, you know, eight gigs of RAM. It has a hard drive that let's just say it's 500 gigs and uh, other things like that. That's the physical machine. Now, if I have a virtual machine, I give parts of whatever the host is. So this is my, my the host machine, the physical pieces that I can touch here, the eight gigs of RAM, something I can, I can touch. The, and whenever I take a virtual machine, I'm gonna say I'm gonna give you two gigs of this RAM and I'm gonna give you 50 gigs of hard drive and you're gonna use those and it's gonna have a machine that's running on this but it, it sort of, <clears throat> it identifies itself as an independent machine. If that makes sense. Might not have made a whole lot of sense but I tried. Um, so some machine hosting uh, software, virtual hosts, uh, hosting software includes VirtualBox, which is what we're gonna be talking a lot about today. Uh, VMware, uh, Hyper-V, Hyper-V is part of a Windows server, and I'm sure there's a few others. Those are the main ones that I've used. Um, yeah, so let's move on from that. We're gonna go back to do the whole installation on VirtualBox, but just to touch on a few of the other options that are out there. Azure has an option, uh, it's in the cloud, like I said before, it's from Microsoft SQL Server, uh, sorry, from Microsoft. Uh, it says, I say uh, advertises 12 months of free service because I've never actually done it, but it says uh, 12 months of free service. What that actually means, I'm not positive, but um, that's what it says. And what's nice about these uh, cloud services nowadays is like I said before, on my machine I might have eight gigs of RAM and 500 gig hard drive, but in the cloud you don't, yeah, like I, I'm testing, but I need more than just those specs. I need more power. So you can pump it up to 32 gigs of RAM. Or if that's too much and you wanna pay less because it costs more to use uh, more resources, then you can scale it back down to two or whatever. So Azure is scalable, like most of the other things, uh, AWS being the other main one in the cloud. This is what it looks like. I just included an image of the website so you can see. <clears throat> it, it advertises uh, virtual machines uh, or Azure, uh, Azure SQL database, which it means that it's more managed by them and less by you. <clears throat> And that's what that looks like. Moving on to Amazon EC2, which stands for Elastic Cloud Compute. Elastic is what I was talking about before, which means that your machine that you're using in, that's in the cloud, it's being hosted by Amazon, right? Remember I talked about how hosting, you can host it on your local machine or by, uh, uh, there'll be somewhere else, in this case, by, hosted by Amazon, AWS. You can scale up or scale down your machine depending on if you need more power or not, which is really nice. Um, they have cheap or free options that you can use. They're gonna be obviously pack a lot less oomph, but if you just wanna do some basic testing on things, then um, it's a really good option because it's in the cloud and you don't have to worry about if you don't want anymore, it just goes away, it doesn't take up any hard drive space. Um, it's really fast, like whenever you go to um, uh, EC2, which I'll show this uh, real quick. Oh, I, you probably can't, you can't really see that too well, but there's a, this is just a list of a bunch of options. Um, as you can, th there's two little black bars you can see there, and those are free options there. And these just come with, uh, Windows, are, they, there's a bunch of different options, Ubuntu or however you pronounce that, uh, Linux, um, Windows, and a few others. You can just, it, it already has Windows installed whenever you, whenever you spin up the, the machine. 
Um, like I said, those are free options right there. They're going to be really small, but um, if you want to use it, then you can do it that way, and it's really fast, and you just have to install SQL Server, but you can install other things, too, if you want. If you don't want to use SQL Server, you want to try something else out, and you're like, oh, my machine sucks, it's terrible, I don't have any space, I don't have any time to set all this up, I don't know where to go. Just like, you, all you need to do is have the database, um, and then you can just go here, and, and then you have a machine that you can tinker around with. Which, by the way, I did a presentation on that a little while ago, and it's online somewhere, because that one was streamed. So if you're curious about that, I do it a little bit more in depth. But we're just gonna move on to Amazon RDS is the next one. <sighs> Sorry about that. Um, RDS, RDS, Relational Database Service. So this one is similar to what we were just talking about, but this comes with the, um, the database already pre-installed. So you don't have to just get a Windows, uh, a machine with a Windows operating system and then you install SQL Server. It's like, no, you could just use SQL Server. It's already ready to go. Um, it's cheap, um, relatively. I don't know, I don't have the exact numbers uh, offhand, but it's, it's not a whole lot for the really low level stuff. Like I said, you can beef a lot of this stuff up and make it really expensive, but you can just get a, a small express instance and um, it's not too much. Uh, it's really quick, and here's a screenshot of what you'll see if you go onto the, um, the website as well, which is really easy to find. And as you can see here, there's a few different options that they list right there. So they have Postgres and a few others, um, and I have clicked on SQL Server in that image, and uh, you can just pick uh, Express Edition is what I have selected there. And it's something like if you're, as long as it's running, it's like 15 or 18 bucks a month. Um, yeah, as long as it's running, if it's up all the time. So it's really not very expensive because you can suspend them and it costs you less money. <clears throat> so let's just, that, that covered most of everything except for, uh, I guess I didn't really cover Docker. Um, Docker, I don't, I'm gonna hold off on talking a lot about that. I, like I said, I've heard really good things about it, but um, I certainly need to be able to play around with it more before I can report back to how that, that one goes. So we're just gonna go through real quick. When I say real quick, I don't know how quick it's gonna be, but we're just gonna go through the step-by-step -step on how to install VirtualBox, install a trial version of Windows Server, and then a developer edition of, of a SQL Server, and put them all onto a virtual machine and then you can play around with it, which is really nice. Um, if this is hard to see, by the way, um, you know, you can reach out to me on Slack or Meetup or anything, and I can always give you these slides. Um, but we're just gonna go through it, because this is what I got. So this is what the VirtualBox website looks like. VirtualBox is completely free. It's a uh, virtual um, machine hosting software. Uh, I really enjoy it personally. Um, I'm sure it's missing a lot of capabilities uh, in comparison to VMware and things like that, but it, it's also free. Um, so if you're working on a Windows machine like I am, although this is a Mac, but uh, whenever I do this stuff, it's uh, on uh, Windows machines, and you select Windows host, um, and it's gonna pop up a little thing. Like I said, it's literally doing some click by click. I'm just gonna go really fast. I just keep everything, um, create a shortcuts and everything, and um, you install it that way. Cha ching So if you need, if you plan on uh, joining us next month and you want to follow along click by click on your own machines, then you're gonna have to go through this process. It's not hard, but uh, you just click on whatever you're using. So if it's uh, Mac or Windows, Linux, um, you just click on whatever it is you wanna use for VirtualBox, and there's nothing really that I'm aware of that you should change. I didn't change anything. You just click yes through everything um, and then you're ready to install and you move on. So you're gonna need that if you want to follow uh, along with us and that goes for anybody watching online or if you plan on being here in person. Like I said before, you don't have to do any of this but if you want to click and play with your own stuff then that's what you're gonna have to do. So, we may or may not be doing this on Windows Server, by the way, um, next, whenever we do this next month, but um, 
you can get an evaluation edition for Windows Server as your operating system for free. You have to, uh, last time I did this, you had to create a free Microsoft account, log in. You don't have to put any credit card information or anything like that. Um, and you get your trial version of Windows Server. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be trying this on Linux and hopefully that works out really well, but for this presentation, I use the Windows Server. Um, the downside to it is, is that you have to re-download and, and uh, install it every six months. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, there might be ways of you just completely disconnecting and messing with the clock so you never have to do that, but I, I mean, this is supposed to be for sandbox stuff. Um, uh, well, so for Windows Server, all, I, yes? Oh, sorry, sorry. The question was, is what, uh, basically, what's the difference between Developer Edition and Evaluation Edition? For SQL Server, I, I'm pretty sure that they send more stuff back with Evaluation Edition to, uh, as far as, like, what you what you're doing back to Microsoft? I not real sure. I I always just do Developer Edition because they're both completely free. I think that Evaluation Edition might have also had a um, time limit. I'm not sure. That's for SQL Server. Uh, for Windows Server, the operating system, uh, there was only one option. Whenever I was looking at the time, uh, they might have a Developer Edition now. I'm not really sure, but the, the Evaluation Edition was the only option at the time. Um, for for that one. Um, for Windows, for, so the question is: is for 2017 Community Edition, what what basically? Right. What what's the deal with the community? Yeah, that's a good question. I I don't know actually. I don't have that. I, I don't know what the difference is for the community edition, to be honest with you. I, I've always just selected developer edition whenever I've had the option because I, I'm not using it. I, I want all the bells and whistles. It comes with all the bells and whistles. And um, like you can do SQL, they, they have SQL Express and things like that, which is totally free as well. And you can actually do production work on that, but you're just missing a bunch of, of stuff. So I, I don't know about community edition that much, but I can look, uh, look it up and I can bring it to the next, we'll be talking about this sort of thing probably next month too, so I'll make a note of that and check it out. Um, so yeah, so developer edition for SQL Server is free post 2016, I wanna say. Um, yeah, and I said, like I said, the, if you get eval edition, I think it they track your stuff a little bit more. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but. That's my understanding. So <clears throat> this is um, what the page, I don't know if it still looks like this actually, it's been actually, I made this a little while ago, but here was 2016, what you got whenever you went to download um, and you would pick your media. This is for uh, SQL Server 2016, SP1, and you just download the media, you pick if you want ISO or CAB, um, either one and then you just download it, this is that easy. Like I had to, uh, like I said, log in with a free Microsoft account, but that's all it took. And then same thing with Windows Server, you just click ISO and that's, that's literally it, you just click and download it. So you just need the, that physical, or uh, you, know, you have to have that copy of, of those installations, those downloads uh, on your machine, if you wanna do this yourself. So let's go and show how to set up VirtualBox. So this will be um, really easy whenever we just hand you the uh, virtual machine uh, in the future, but this is showing how I'm setting it up. So if you wanna set it up in the future yourself, however you want, this is how you'll do it. Um, really nice that uh, you can duplicate stuff like I talked about before. So. Um, I've in the past made a sort of base level Windows server that's all patched and everything and ready to go. And then I made copies of it and then I made one into a domain controller and then I made two into a SQL Server 1, SQL Server 2 and then I put them all part of the same domain and then I made the two SQL servers talk to each other, put them, I clustered them, put them in an availability group and made them talk back and forth. So it's one of the, another nice thing about uh, 
doing virtual machine as opposed to just putting stuff on your, your directly onto your home machine. It's, you can do things like that. And it's really quick and easy. So we'll go a little bit, uh, we'll go through that. And again, one of the main things I want to come out of this is you can rewatch this at a future time and go, okay, how did he do this? So I can redo this if I want to. <clears throat> okay, so this is what it looks like whenever you spin up a virtual box manager. Um, what we're gonna do is click new and go to, uh, you name your SQL server or uh, your virtual machine, whatever it is you want. So in this case, I did SQL test one. Um, we're using Windows as the operating system. Uh, and I just did a 64-bit um, for version there. So you just select those things. Now you're gonna pick how much memory you're gonna give it. So I sort of lean towards, right here I had uh, 16 gigs and I gave it three. Um, I mean, I typically give around a quarter of what I have to, to one, just be, I, I don't really know why. So if you, had, if you only had four gigs, like I'd give it a gig of RAM. I'd give it as much as you can, but you don't wanna choke out your host machine if you don't have to. Um, this is where we create the virtual hard drive. And as you can see here, we have several different options. Do not uh, add a virtual hard drive, create virtual hard drive, uh, hard disk now, or use an existing virtual hard disk file. So this is where next month, whenever you get the virtual from us, that if you have it and you downloaded it onto your computer, um, this is where you would select use existing hard disk file. Okay, so you would just select that and you'd be able to use what we've already created and you just open it and run it. That's the idea. Hopefully that works out as well in theory, in practice as it does in theory. Um, but for this, we're gonna go show how I created one, like I said, in case you wanna do it yourself in the future. So you can pick your hard disk file here. We're probably gonna go with virtual hard disk just in case people wanna use VMware or something. I think that would probably be better, but for the case of using VirtualBox, VirtualBox disk image is just fine. Um, the storage on the physical hard disk, so this is on my host machine. How do I wanna save this data? How do I want this data stored? Um, dynamically is the way to go. What that says is that, okay, my, whenever I go into my virtual machine, it's gonna say I have an 80 gig hard drive or whatever I selected, however you, much you want, okay? Um, but as far as what it actually takes up on your, your physical disk, it will only take up what it uses, right? So what that means is that if I used a fixed size and I looked on my uh, host machine, it would have a 80 gig, the, the size of the machine would be 80 gigs, okay? Because that would be, uh, give or take, or, or there might be a file that's 80 gigs for the hard drive file, but the point is is that it would take up and say, you're not, uh, host, you're not allowed to use this, this is our fixed size, this is for the virtual machine. Dynamically says this is a, the virtual machine is 10 gigs or however big it is, but if you start adding databases to the, to the virtual, it's, that's gonna grow up to 80, if that makes sense. So this is what I like to do if, you, if you're afraid you're gonna fill up your, uh, you, you put 10 different uh, virtuals on your machine, on your uh, host machine, and you're afraid you're gonna forget and then you're gonna start adding things to a bunch of different ones and it's gonna fill up your hard drive, then maybe you should use a fixed size. But um, for me, I'm just gonna use dynamically allocated just so, because I, I don't need it to take up that much space. I'm not that worried about it. Um, so as you can see here, this is 80 gigs. So this is also important. This is how we're gonna have to do this because you know, it, for those who want to join um, next month, it's gonna be a pretty decent sized um, download. It, but, and this is also the best solution that I was able to come up with. There was a few different options. We'll talk a little bit more about the decision to go this way later. But um, instead of making everybody who wants to join download an 80 gig file, it's gonna be like nine gigs or something. It's gonna be a lot smaller than um, 80 gigs, which nine gig download is not ideal, but it's not a backbreaker, I don't think. But that's it, so after we choose where we're saving this, which you can pick wherever you want, and the size of uh, 
the hard drive, then we're ready to move on. So this is what it looks like then. This is SQL test one, it's powered off. Um, we're gonna go into the settings here. I had to switch to Windows 2012 for this edition for some reason. That's probably not a problem anymore, but if you do need to change your version, let's say that you chose Linux, but you want to install uh, Windows Server as your operating system, then uh, this is where you would change that. You'd go to General <coughs> under Settings. There's also, if you go to System here, you can change like, oh no, I, I accidentally gave it uh, you know, seven out of my eight available gigs of RAM and now my, everything's running really slow. Uh, you can change things here. You can also change how many CPUs you're gonna give it. So here I'm only giving it one CPU. Uh, we're gonna make some changes to the network. So right now it's uh, attached to NAT, which what that means is that it's going, it's getting internet from my host machine. So I'm gonna change that to internal network and allow VMs. And the reason that I'm doing it that way is because I just want this to be isolated to itself. Right? I don't want it to be able to go through my host machines and go reach out to the internet. It's just gonna be stuck where it is right there. Um, and then I chose allow VMs because like I said, if you want to make other virtual machines and have them all talk to each other, then you need to allow them to talk. And so that's all the settings we're, changes we're gonna make right there. Um, now we're going to start it up. So this is what it looks like after we do all that. We're gonna hit the green start button. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, select startup disk. So this is where we need to find the, um, the uh, operating system, the Windows Server operating system that we downloaded earlier, the evaluation edition, the one that lasts only six months. So here's where I saved that. And so I'm gonna double click that. It's gonna go give us, um, it's gonna insert itself there. And then whenever we start up the virtual machine, now we're installing Windows Server 2016, which is what this looks like. So just we're gonna go real, through this real quick. We're just gonna hit install. We're gonna make sure we have the right uh, evaluation um, with GUIs and everything. We're just gonna hit accept. Um, so again, this isn't an upgrade, this is custom. We're gonna pick the one hard drive that we um, made and we're gonna install, ta-da, and it's all done. And it won't be that fast if you do it yourself, but uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of time. So now we're gonna add guest editions. This is not really that, this is a virtual box thing. If you wanna have a uh, full screen, then you have to add virtual box to guest editions. It's not really that important. But if you want to do that, then you go to devices, insert guest editions. So that's going to like pretend that you put in an, a CD and then you just double click it and run on, you run the uh, file and like I said, this is just gonna make your virtual where it's able to uh, go full screen. If you care about that sort of thing, then it's a nice thing to do. So we're gonna add a shared folder to this virtual now. Where the reason we're doing that is because we have this um, SQL server installation sitting on the host machine that the virtual machine can't see, but we're installing the SQL server on the virtual machine, okay? So we need the virtual machine to see the folder that has SQL server, because otherwise we're gonna have to take SQL server on the host machine, copy it to the virtual machine, and then we're just gonna have double the space. Like, might as well just let the uh, um, virtual machine just see what we have downloaded already, and then you can run the installer through that. So we're just gonna go to shared folders. We're just gonna add where it is. In this case, it was in the presentation folder. We're gonna auto mount it and there it is. So that's the important thing for getting that in there. So now we're gonna back up the virtual. Um, probably also, maybe I didn't include this, maybe, I'm not sure, but what you probably should do before making your backup is you might as well just run the updates on your, um, server on the OS because there's gonna have a ton of updates that it's gonna to have to do. Um, and like I said, if you make a copy of this, if you did what I did, which was make a domain controller and a few other SQL servers, then instead of having to do updates on everything, you do it on the main copy and then you can go out from there. So we probably should have done some updates and then make a copy, but that's okay. 
So the way that this works is we go to the virtual media manager. We're going to um, take the hard drive here. We're going to hit copy. That's what we want to copy. If you remember, this is what we created earlier. It's the only thing we have now, but if we had a bunch, just remember whatever one you want to choose. We're making another hard disk, so we're going to ha also have to pick. This is just the, the process. Even if you're adding a new one, I think if you're adding a new one, you're going to have to pick dynamically or fixed. And then you just make the name of the copy that you want. So now we have a copy, and if we want to, we can add those uh, later and make them play and have fun. How's everything going so far? Everything OK? Everybody doing all right? Two thumbs up from John. That's a surprise. That guy's always so cheerful. Wish you'd knock it off every once in a while. Yeah. Um, okay, does anybody have any questions so far? I'm sort of going through this fast. I'm not. Um, um, yeah, sure. So that, that is on the host, but if you go in the virtual machine now, that was through the mounting process, it'll also show on the virtual machine. Okay, so it's the same folder, and you can, you can see it in both places now. So I don't know if that actually, that's actually what I'm doing here. Okay, so this will, this is, that's a good question. So um, this is what we're looking right now. Um, I'm sorry if this doesn't, uh, if you guys can't see this, but... Um, this is what it looks like in the virtual machine whenever I hit um, the file explorer, okay? Um, you go down to uh, network and you see that this is an atta attachment to, uh, that you can click on. So you click on this VBox SVR, then there's presentation. So there's the folder that I gave access to. Let's just go back a little bit. So right here, presentation is the folder I selected, okay? So whenever we added share, it was from F presentation, and we auto mounted it here. So now let me go back forward, da, 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 and there's presentation right there. So everything in that folder we now have on the virtual machine, and we didn't have to copy any data or anything. That's the important thing. Does that make sense? Okay. Oh, I didn't think I, I did. I, I didn't remember. Gosh. I know, but all right. I didn't repeat the question. I'm beating myself up about it. Um, so this is all I had um, in that uh, folder. So this is the ins uh, installer for SQL Server. Um, we're going to hit setup, run. This is a lot of this like click through stuff. I went a little bit in more in depth on how to install like good things to remember when installing SQL Server on the last. Um, sort of sandbox in AWS um, presentation I did. So I encourage you to go and look at that if you're interested in some best practices stuff. I should really should just do an in-depth installation guide. But anyway, so this is, uh, it's on YouTube now. Techlahoma's, Techlahoma's YouTube and search Jimmy Ewald. Yeah, like Kimberly said. So it should be on there. Um, and it goes, like I said, I, I try to go a little bit more in depth on that one. Uh, we talk about separating the hard drive out, which is really, um, really important for your SQL Server. You want to keep your data files away from where you don't want them to be on C. You would want your log files separated from your uh, data files so that if your logs blow out, then you can still access the database. It just you'll have logs, you'll have uh, processes fail. Um, it goes. I go more in, in depth about that, but we're just going to be sort of covering just a real quick installation if you just want to goof off. Um, if you just want to, I do encourage everyone to, whenever you're doing this, think about what it is that you want to accomplish, right? So if you if you want to, because uh, when I say goof off, I mean we're we're all installing a sandbox to try to learn something, right? So maybe you're less concerned about the installation, and so that's why this sort of thing, you can just sort of more, more or less click through everything and not really worry about it. Um, but if you want to learn that sort of thing, then think about, you know, e even if you don't look up whatever, what I said, you know, look up uh, the best way to do that, the best way to install SQL Server. There's uh, countless articles online. 
But um, just for the basics, we're gonna go to installation here. Uh, we're gonna click on it, hit run. So this is where you can select your edition, uh, free edition. So you select, you select uh, developer edition here. And this is for 2016, but um, I think everything post 2016 is uh, developer edition. I, I would be shocked to, to not, if, if they change that and me not know about it. So if you want an, a new edition, you click this is where you click developer. Um, you can also do SQL Express here, like I talked about before. Uh, if you wanna know what SQL Express can do, maybe that's something that you wanna do, right? You want to, your business, you have a small business, right? And you don't need that much, but you want some place to reliably store, uh, uh, house your data and be able to use it. And so you wanna use SQL Server um, Express Edition. This would, might be a great place for you to, to try that out and play around. So that would be an option here for um, <clears throat> under specify free edition. Otherwise, if you're using, um, this is if you had a uh, standard or enterprise edition, you could enter the key in there too. But this for a sandbox, we're not gonna be needing that. So moving on, we need to accept the terms, blah, 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 sell your soul. Um, don't, I never click that. Yeah, don't want to. I, whenever I install updates, I want to be the one that installs the updates. I don't want Microsoft to, because like sometimes you can be on the bleeding edge of things, you know? Oh, you patch something the same day, and then, yeah, that can be bad. So I want to be in control, so I don't check the box that. Um, you'll, a lot of times, get the firewall warning down there. Don't worry about it. So in this particular case, I clicked on everything but Polybase. Uh, you don't probably need to do that much. I Just pick what you, is you want to work on, and maybe you don't know what it is you wanna work on, so you just wanna do everything, that's fine, that's totally fine. Whenever you pick developer edition, it gives you the keys to everything. So it could be really big, it could be a big download, maybe you need more than the 80 gigs I was giving it. Um, I doubt it, um, but you know, what, depending on what you, you pick, that, that will determine how much needs to be installed. Um, yeah, so that's, that's why I chose in this particular case. Um, we're gonna do default instance, not a named instance, not to dive too much into it, but named instance. You always wanna do default instance unless you already have a default instance and then you're doing named instances. And most of the times you sh probably shouldn't be even using a named instance, probably. So default instance is gonna be the name, it's gonna, um, Whenever you log into stuff, you just use period and then that'll get you right in so you don't have to remember the name of your server. But otherwise you wanna, before you do this, you can rename your server if you want to um, because the, the default instance, you're, you're not gonna name it. So this is just MSSQL server. That's gonna be the uh, instance ID and we're just gonna move on from there. This is a bunch of stuff that I talked more about in the other uh, presentation, we're not gonna dive into it, but these are all the services that are coming with it, which is a lot. Um, yeah, we're not gonna change that. This is another place where um, you, if you want to do a proper installation, you're gonna wanna choose your data direct directories and tempdb correctly, um, but, uh, we won't cover that right now. Um, as far as authentication mode goes, so Windows authentication mode, um, the first time I did this, I did not give myself access, my user access to the SQL server that I was installing. This is where you do that, okay? So I chose mix mode for this uh, presentation. Mix mode uh, means that you have an SA uh, that the credentials are in SQL Server. It's not on uh, your Windows Server. So you enter a password there and then you can choose using SQL Server authentication to log in that way or, or Windows authentication if you're given access. So you wanna make sure that you know the password to your SA if you do mix mode, whatever password you enter in here, know that. Or um, if you just use Windows authentication mode, put your user credentials in, just add current user, that's what you're logged in as. You'll see at the bottom there, right? Right, yeah. 
add current user. So add it there, because if you're like me, the first time I did that, I didn't add current user, and then I went through an entire SQL Server installation that I couldn't even get into it. Silly Jimmy. So this is what, uh, yeah, so I'm just logged in as the administrator on the server, on the, on the virtual machine, and uh, it added me. And then I just, I don't know why I did mixed mode, but if you're curious about that, you can do that too. Data directories, you wanna pick the right places for those. I didn't do that in this case. Uh, I don't even, yeah, I, I just went through, just clicked through these ones. This is like I said, it, it might make more sense to do this the correct way if that's something you're interested in. If you wanna know the correct way to do that, look it up, distributed replay controller. What is the right way to, to do this? But you have to add a user for this, so add, this, this one's not a very good example, but um, for analysis services, like maybe there's something that you need to do with the, probably wanna put those data directories in the right place as well, but like I said, if, if that matters to you, look it up and do it the right way. If you're not sure what you're doing, then honestly, if I went to, was to go back and do this, I know I'm not gonna use the analysis services. Uh, I, just wouldn't, I just wouldn't include them. Um, but ultimately, it's all up to you. Same thing with everything else, but at the end of the day, you're gonna click through everything, you're gonna get ready to install, and you're gonna hit install. And you're done installing SQL Server on your machine, which is kinda cool. Um, that's the click by click step through of how to do that yourself. Like I said, you're not gonna have to do this if you wanna join us next month with the workshop. You're not gonna go through, have to go through that whole process. The only thing you're gonna have to do is download VirtualBox and then um, we'll go back over uh, um, that, the, the picking the hard drive for VirtualBox. Um, Man, I need to like, I need to like add some, I need to add some more fun to these things. This is like, I'm getting, I'm like falling asleep to my own voice up here. Um, I should just, I should just like add a funny video or something randomly in the middle of this thing next time. Just like out of nowhere. I'd, yeah, something. Anyway. <laughs> uh, The end goal. One, one, well, I can go back to the goals if we want to look at those. Let me see. So here's today's goals. Oh, next month's goals. Okay. Um, so now, yeah, that's a good. That's a good idea. We'll we'll cover that too. Let me go back to that slide then. Okay. So next month's goals is what. So what we're going to do is the process I just showed everybody. Me and Randy and Bill and maybe other people, I don't know, we're, we're, we're going to build a virtual machine like we just showed, right? Or at least similar to what we just showed. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it. We're gonna put like a database on it and we're gonna break it. And then we're gonna put it out there on S3, most likely. And we're gonna say, hey, if you wanna click through and try to help solve these problems with us, then you can download from S3 and then you can attach the virtual machine to VirtualBox or whatever uh, uh, virtual hosting software you're using. Um, and then you can click along with us and try to solve things or you can try to solve them ahead of time. We're probably gonna provide the list of problems night of most likely. Um, if everything goes according to plan, this all sounds good on my head, but I'm sure something will happen and I'll be like, ooh, yeah, that's not gonna work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do some problem solving on how to uh, uh, get the whole thing going. Thanks for coming. Um, and uh, gosh, I lose my train of thought so easily. I just say goodbye and I'm like, all right, where am I again? <laughs> Still such a nice day. I can see the nice, the sun out there. I'm like, oh man, I bet it was so nice. and. I, I didn't even bring my jacket into work today either because I was like, no way. Anytime I can wear shorts too, I'd like instantly into shorts without, like if I, if, I should have just done it today. You can only see like my upper half anyway, right? Like I, I should just want shorts. I know, yes, I need to, gosh.
That next time it's nice, nice we're meeting in the park. I don't know what park, but some park. Um, uh, oh, next month's plans. We'll figure. We'll get through this. Yeah. Out, so first thing we're gonna do is meet outside next month. Um, no, but so we're going to. If you don't want to download the however many gig uh, virtual machine and install it on your own machine, that's totally fine. Or if those who show up next month and they weren't aware of their first time or whatever, that's totally fine too. Um, but we're going to be putting out there the details on Twitter, Meetup, and Slack um, for where to go to get this, okay? And um, what we're going to do is we're going to, like I said, allow everybody to download those things if they want to and uh, put them on their own uh, machine. Now, whenever everybody shows up, we're going to say, okay, here's the list of things we broke. We're going to go through them step by step, and we're going to say, this is um, problem number one. Here are the symptoms. Look it up yourself if you want. Otherwise, it's going to be up here. How do we fix this? Now, what I would really like to do in the future is have a workshop where it's a little bit more personal, right? So you bring in your own problems, and we're going to do sort of like a free, like everybody brainstorm different things. Problem with that is, is, that, that, is that A, people have to actually have stuff that they want to do if they want to do that, and B, um, like can talk about those things, you know, there's a lot of NDAs and things like that, not allowed to talk about uh, that sort of thing. So we have to get around that as well. And also probably some liabilities with giving advice for things, I'm guessing. So always have to worry about that. Um, so this is just a very easy, like this is how um, I would troubleshoot these problems that we're gonna the list. And um, how would everybody else do this? Does anybody else have ideas? How would, it's sort of like, in my mind, I, I would hope, I hope it's gonna be a, the best way to like troubleshoot these kinds of issues. Because it's unlikely that any issues we come up with are going to be specifically what other people are experiencing, right? Like it, it's not gonna really happen probably. It could be really close, but going through troubleshooting on how to, solve general problems when it comes to service accounts or th things of that nature. I can't restore a database. It's giving me this error. What is the first thing I should check? That sort of thing. That's good. That's, that's my goals for next month. And hopefully it works. And if it burns and crashes, then oh well. So kind of the basics of database Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the basics of database administration is uh, what um, Brandon said, and yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. And ho hopefully, it, hopefully it's as cool as it sounds. It's probably, like I said, it's gonna be just everything on fire. People are gonna be screaming and crying and... <laughs> yeah, I wish. He said there, we all get certificates at the end. Yeah, no, no. But um, I, I'll get, I can bring maybe like a roll of, of uh, like stickers though, you know? If everybody likes stickers, and then if you solved it, then you get a sticker. Um, John is like, he is pumped back there for people who can't see. See, this is why if you, you should be here if you're watching, if you can't be here, then I understand. But uh, if, you, if you were here, you could have had Jimmy John's and John, you could see John celebrating about getting a sticker. He loves stickers. Um, okay, so uh, without rambling too much more, um, Let's see, let me just make sure that I covered the plan. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, like I said, I would like it to be mostly like everybody, my plan is this, maybe one person downloads the virtual machine and, and actually gets it going, and maybe not, and that's fine. Like I won't be mad about that whatsoever, but like just having the option and then everybody else show up and then we can all walk through things together and that sounds really cool. Does that sound good to you, John? John had a night, so John was the original, I mentioned this earlier, who had, was like, he's been asking for a workshop for like two years or something like that. This is more or less like a step in the right direction for what you envisioned too? Absolutely. Okay, he likes it, cool. Okay, so let, one more time, really quick. This is what's gonna happen. You're gonna download VirtualBox, okay, if you wanna follow along. You're going to hit new, 
You're going to name whatever it is you want to name it, make it Microsoft Windows because it's going to, well, it might not be Microsoft Windows. This, de this detail will be included with wherever you get this stuff because it might be on Linux, we don't know. Um, maybe not. You're going to pick how much memory you want to give it because everybody has different amounts of RAM on their machines. And it'll tell you how much your max is. Like I said, give it a quarter of what you, uh, what you have if you don't know. Then here, instead of clicking, right now it has selected create a virtual hard disk now. We're not going to use that. We're going to use use an existing virtual hard disk file. Then you're going to select what you downloaded from me whenever we provide that. And you're going to use that. It's going to, and then you're, you're going to have it. You're going to be able to log into it. Ideally, that's the plan. I'll see how it goes. And uh, if it doesn't work like that, uh, and we find out in the next month, like I said, just keep an eye on Meetup. We're going to do our best to uh, do what we say, <laughs> but you never know. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll give it our best shot. Final question. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, is um, um, what are the, could, could we go back over the concerns of installing, instead of installing on a virtual machine, just installing on your, just your machine, machine. Um, and the problems that I have with that are if you, for, what, first off, you installing it on your machine has implications because it, it becomes, it's like it's tangled up with your OS, like it, 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 it can affect your your machine's performance, how things work. If you uninstall things, it can make it can break things. Um, I don't have any specific examples of that, but that's a, a worry for doing it that way. Uh, let's say that that's that we that we don't have any of those issues though. Another concern for for that is is you're playing around on your sandbox, right? Let's say you installed something that you shouldn't have installed maybe it's a tool that you want to use or something like that for, for your SQL server and it had, you know, a virus on it or something like that or, or, or it just, it took your uh, machine and it just made your CPUs go through the roof or, or did something else, who knows. The, the whole point of the sandbox is, is that you can do whatever you want if things catch on fire and start burning to the ground, you can just say, whoop, whoop, killing that and the rest of your machine is isolated, if that makes sense, your host is isolated. So that's a big thing. And then, and then saving it, having backups, being able to roll back, roll forward, share. Like I said, making copies so that if you want to do a domain controller in the future or make a second SQL server and try to get them to talk, those are all options with a virtual machine. If you just put it on your home machine, you installed 2016 or 18 or whatever, whatever version it is you installed. And, and don't get me wrong, you can, if you just want to, um, there's not necessarily anything wrong with doing it that way. Like let's say that you want to just take some of your Excel stuff, you want to move it over to SQL Server and you just want to just see what that import process looks like and then you want to be able to manipulate the data in SQL Server. Sure, then you could do it that way and I'm not saying that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but it's still my preference to be able to put things on a virtual machine. Um, just mostly because of the isolation factor. So the, the question. That's a good question. Um, the question was, ha, remembering to repeat the question. Let's go. Uh, um, the question was is that, so my machine requires drivers for certain things. So my machine is gonna be different than your machine. So you're gonna download my virtual machine is it possible that the drivers are not gonna be compatible with your machine? I believe the answer to that is, is that the virtual machine, uh, the, virtual, the, the hosting software, so VirtualBox in this case, in this example, takes care of that. So whenever you install it on your machine, whether you're installing on Linux or Mac or something like that, it sets it up to, to culture an environment to where you can, it doesn't matter what your host is because you're using VirtualBox software. Does that make sense? It, ideally. Now here's the thing. 
I have never created a virtual machine on Windows and then tried to take that same virtual machine and just for an example, taking a Mac and trying to put it on Mac. But as long as I, I, I believe that as long as I have virtual machine installed on both of those and I have the same, that they, it should be able to take the file, the virtual machine, um, the, the virtual machine itself and run it on both of them independent on whether it's a Mac or Windows. Right, right, exactly. So yeah, yeah, as long as the virtual host is the same. So if you use, um, yeah, it, exactly. Now, it, it's possible, depending on what type of file you save your virtual machine as, like I showed earlier, let me see what, if I can find it real quick. Um, there's a few different ways you can save the file. Where is it? Was it, no, no, this way. I'm just gonna click through real quick. Oh no, it's way back over here. I'm way too far forward. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Right here. Okay, so whenever we select the hard disk file type, right here I have virtual box disk image selected. My guess is, is that that probably wouldn't work too well with say VMware, okay? But perhaps virtual hard disk can be used by VMware. I'm not sure about that. I'm guessing that that's more likely than the virtual box disk image. So um, the only way, as John said, to make sure is that if we are using the same up-to-date virtual box um, uh, hosting software, then um, that'll be the best bet, ideally. <laughs> and then everybody will do that and then everything will break everywhere, I'm sure, but <laughs> oh, what can you do? Well, give it a shot, you know? Any other questions anybody has? Um, the, the virtual image you guys are going to supply, is it going to have that partition key in the log file? <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. I, I'd like to give something that more or less resembles how it, it's supposed to look. So, um, the, oh, duh. Oh, almost, I, I'm remembering now at least. The question was, is the uh, virtual machine that we're gonna be providing going to, the hard drive on that machine going to be partitioned like we would imagine a SQL server is supposed to be? So the, where the data files are in the right place and the log files are in the right place and everything is in the right place. And my answer to that is it should be. That's the, uh, I don't see any reason why it won't be unless I'm just that lazy. Um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna put it past myself. Um, but they, I would like it to be somewhat resembling uh, what an actual SQL server should look like. So in that case, yeah. Any other questions? Online, how's everybody looking like online? Nothing. They're like, we fell asleep a long time ago, man. Huh? No questions yet. Well, thanks. Thanks for showing up. Um, hopefully it wasn't too dull. Uh, I've done a few things like this before. The first time I did uh, one just like this for VirtualBox, I don't believe it was recorded, so that was another reason why I wanted to do this in preparation for next month. But either way, uh, I encourage anybody who wants to learn about this stuff um, to try out a sandbox like this. Um, VirtualBox is easy to use uh, once you tinker around with it a little bit. Um, go back over this recording. Uh, if you wanna see, I tried to record literally every single click along the way. Um, and I saved them all uh, as individual images so that I didn't have any problems with um, <clears throat> going through a live demo because it's kind of a long process uh, if you're going to do a live demo. But anyways, um, please reach out to me on uh, Slack or Meetup if you want to, uh, if you have any direct questions with me or if you would like these slides. I am more than happy to pass them along, but you'll have to reach out to me if you'd like them. Um, yeah, otherwise, that'll do it. Thanks again for coming, appreciate it, and hope to see you all next month on the 15th of April. So thanks everyone.